at the time I had, had talks with other places for sure. That's very true, actually. Yeah, yeah. I like I like to remind people of that as well that she was my fan first. So, and now now I'm more of a fan. So that was my first introduction to Gunther. <laughs> he just has a different mind and vision for it, and I think that's why it's so successful. And I think it's going to continue to be very successful. Well, before we get started, man, con congrats on being a, a girl dad. That must feel pretty good. Yeah, I pre yeah, it feels really good. Like, I mean, at the moment, this is like my first longest sort of period away from my newborn baby. So I definitely am missing her a little bit because uh, at this age, she's just turned three months. Every day she's changing. So so I'm sure once I get back, she'll look like a whole different little girl. So, <laughs> but Is she ready to do some tsunamis off the couch yet or not let wait a little bit longer? Not yet, but already, already as a little baby, like obviously you can't avoid it in my household. There's wrestling on the TV and stuff. Uh, she she seems to like the wrestling, so whenever it's on or in the background, like she'll watch it. So, so we'll see. I don't know if I want my daughter growing up to be a pro wrestler or not. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Bronson wanted to ask you, mate. In terms of like your professional life, you've been under the two kind of modern regimes of the WWE. What do you think the differences are between the previous one and the, the Paul Levesque era that we're kind of entering into now? Uh, I mean, th th I think the biggest difference is uh, I've always been a uh, hunter guy, I guess. I guess that's what you can call me. I came into NXT under Triple H and I learned so much from him in NXT and I became a champion in NXT because of him. Uh, so when I returned to WWE, it was a big part because of, of Paul Levesque, because of Triple H. So uh, my main thing is that I think that uh, Triple H, she's wrestling in such a such a different way to most humans. Like, I've watched a copious amount of pro wrestling in my lifetime, like unhealthy amounts of pro wrestling. <laughs> and uh, there's not really anyone, I think, that would know more than me. And then Triple H is like next, next level, t tier level when it comes to wrestling. Like, he just has a different mind and vision for it. And I think that's why it's so successful. And I think it's going to continue to be very successful. And he's got WWE just flying. Like it's, I don't know whether it's ever been hotter than it is now. Uh, and particularly the Aussie crew, the Aussie crew's going crazy. But is it true that when Rhea Ripley was in the crowd in Adelaide, she was watching you at one point and you inspired her to become a wrestler? That's very true, actually. Yeah, yeah. I like I like to remind people of that as well that she was my fan first. So, and now now I'm more of a fan. So, uh, but yeah, she <laughs> she she was a teenager watching wrestling, and I was a local independent wrestler at the time in Adelaide. So, it just so happened that she was in the crowd coming to shows as I was wrestling, and uh, I think she has a poster or two on her walls back home with me. So, there we go. <laughs> oh well, I was gonna, I was gonna say how much of her career do you take credit for, but it sounds like maybe quite a lot. <laughs> Mate, not actually, not that much. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I always, I always say like uh, the Australian wrestling crew here, we're all really good with each other. We're, we're all friends. We all look out for each other. Obviously, Rhea Ripley, myself, from Adelaide, so I always try to be that little bit of a bigger brother for her. Uh, even though she's done so much more in her sh short time in WWE, I still am older than her, so I still try to help her out. Uh, and then you have Indy and, and Grayson as well. So, But we're, we're all close, which is great. You left the WWE in 2021, Bronson, did some Correct. incredible things in Japan. On the path back to WWE, was there ever any sin like sincere consideration to maybe go and work with somebody else or was getting home to wwe kind of always the plan uh i mean at the time i had talks with other places for sure mm -hmm. uh I think my main goal was either to return to wwe and there was a lot of things that i hadn't been able to do because obviously i was on nxt and i wanted to be a part of a monday night raw or a smackdown and do all these big ple's like royal rumble wrestlemania all those mm -hmm. things uh, my only, the other biggest competition was Japan. So at the same time, obviously I was doing good stuff there and, and they had offered me one contract at WWE and other, but in the end, like I grew up watching WWE since I was a tiny little kid. So like the dreams are sort of what overtakes everything else. So that was ultimately my choice, but uh, I still think I'm not done with things in Japan at one point as well. You grew up watching wrestling. You just said you were a big WWE fan. There's a lot of great uh, competition, we'll say at the moment, with professional wrestling at the moment. Yeah. What do you make of all of the tribalism that's going on with wrestling fans? Can you have 
the best of both worlds or do you do you subscribe to the like this is my team and this is who I'm with what's your take on that uh I mean I think it's fun for fans to sort of have that tribalism and and uh and you know if you don't take it too seriously obviously some people do <laughs> uh I think I think more than ever the actual talent you know a lot of us came up through similar places through the independence and and Japan and stuff like that so neither of us on either side actually hate each other or anything i think if anything everyone's just trying to push for their product to be the best mm. you know like uh, i'm i'm very competitive in what i do so i want whatever i do to be seen and to have the most eyes on it and i'm sure people are like that on the other side as well so uh i think it's an exciting time for wrestling fans and speaking of being seen in in pro wrestling like you're on tv with millions of people watching every every week You've talked in the past about body image and how important it is that, you know, because there's some toxic beliefs around body image and particularly in wrestling. I know the women go through it. I've heard you talk about it passionately. Can you speak on that a little bit and how important it is to have different shapes and sizes on TV? Yeah, I think 100%. Uh, representation is such a big thing. And, uh, you know, for kids out there watching wrestling, they need to be able to see all these different body types and see themselves in someone that's on television. Uh, I like to think I'm sort of a little bit of that for a lot of the Pacifica, Pacific Islander kids back home in Australia. You know, we have obviously your Grayson's and your Rears and stuff, but it, I think I'm something a little bit different that a whole lot of people back home can sort of get behind. Um, and if you don't have that representation, it sort of will hurt a whole broad range of people. So I think WWE is doing really well by having a broad range of people on television. You mentioned NXT earlier. Um, it's been such an important pathway for WWE superstars to yes. kind of learn, not learn the trade, because by the time you're in NXT, you're already incredible athletes and performers. But how important do you think NXT has been to yourself and more broadly speaking, to the development of, of superstars in maybe even the last five years? Yeah, I think it's very important. You know, I, I had wrestled all over the world. I had wrestled in different countries. Um, but nothing is quite like wrestling for WWE and for the cameras and for the way that they operate. So really, you do need something like an NXT to learn just how to do what you do, but for WWE television. Uh, and I think it's it's a great breeding ground for not only you have a lot of wrestlers come from the independents and stuff like that, but now we have a bunch of athletes coming from different colleges and stuff, and they're getting to shine and sort of blow your minds that like someone might be, have been wrestling for three months and they look like they've been wrestling for three years. You're right in the hunt, Bronson, right now for the IC title. Very exciting yes. times. I know that you're also, uh, you've known the former incredible IC champion, Gunther, for quite a while now yes. <laughs> i don't know if i've been stitched up or if i read this properly is it true that the very first time that you two met there was something to do with a clogged toilet involved is that legit or have i been, well, <laughs> have i just been well, reading I the wrong i didn't realize this was out there online but yes it's true yes true. you have two big boys staying in a hotel room together uh these things happen uh so the first way the first time i ever met uh Gunther, then walter at the time uh, we were in LA for a wrestling promotion called PWG, which a lot of guys that wrestled in PWG are now in WWE or other places. And uh, he knocked on the hotel room door. We were sharing together. I opened the door and I said, sorry, mate, toilet's clogged. <laughs> <laughs> that was my first introduction to Gunther. <laughs> Bronson, it's been a pleasure, mate. Hopefully the next time we get to have a chat, we can sit down across from each other, talk face to face. That'd be until, good. <laughs> until then, be we're, gonna keep, we're gonna keep watching binge and we're going to be watching you dominating on Raw and doing Aussies proud. So we appreciate your time, yeah. mate. Thanks very much. Thanks, Bronson. Cheers, man. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it.